Welcome back. So today I'm going to talk about a subject, uh, death. You know, it's inevitable. Everyone's going to go through it. Uh, I think the average um, lifespan in uh, the United States, uh, women actually live uh, longer than men. And you can understand why. I guess uh, men take uh, a lot more risks than women in life. Um, uh, for example, uh, going to the military or the type of work that they do. So, uh, and the, the amount of stress, you know, just uh, in general, you know, raising a family. I mean, women go through that as well, but I think men have a little bit extra stress simply because they're the, mostly the providers and the types of jobs that they work. So it's uh, understandable that uh, men will die before they're their wives. Uh, I don't know if uh, actually being married or not being married contributes to living longer or dying earlier. Uh, I think that can be, uh, well, being married is, can be stressful. I've been married several times, so uh, that definitely can put some pressure on you, um, uh, both financially and emotionally. Uh, the um, one aspect I think uh, of longevity, obviously, I, I believe that it has a lot to do with genetics. Uh, genetics is definitely a factor in uh, longevity. I know my uh, great grandmother; she lived to over a hundred. I believe it was one hundred and four. She was one of the oldest in uh, New York City at the time, uh, and, and the woman died of natural causes, uh, just of old age. Uh, I remember one time we took her to the doctor. She was complaining of some pain or something. And the doctor looked at her and said, she lived this long. What do you want me to do for her? There was nothing we can do. I mean, she's going to have some aches and pains, uh, which I thought was quite funny. Uh, she used to, she would cook. She would stand for hours and cook because we, we had a big, pretty big family. And uh, she kept underneath the sink, she kept a bottle of whiskey. And you know, occasionally she'd take a shot out of the bottle, you know, I don't know. Maybe that helped her, I don't know. Uh, but genetically, I think uh, she was, uh, you know, she had good genes. Um, on the other hand, uh, my father, who died extremely young, he died at 58. And uh, his father, my grandfather, on, was on my father's side, um, died also at 58, uh, kidney disease. So I think a lot has to do to genetics. Uh, my great grandmother's uh, husband died at 98. He also died of natural causes. I was actually there when he passed away. He was sitting in his favorite chair watching television, and we were over at the house at that time. And he just uh, he just said a little prayer and just closed his eyes, and that was it. He was gone. So. Um, the fear of, uh, of dying, I, I don't know if I actually fear dying. Um, I, think, I think most people, just the thought of the unknown. Um, I've, seen, I've read so many articles about the doctors that have experienced, you know, with their patients, near-death experiences. And uh, it, didn't seem, it didn't seem that, uh, that scary. From once they came back, uh, they seemed to experience kind of like a calmness, actually. And it wasn't uh, so much of a fear factor involved. Uh, I, saw, I saw a sad uh, article in Canada where there were, I guess, there were two, it was a husband and wife terminally ill, and in Canada you can have assisted uh, death, and they actually, uh, both of them, uh, went that direction with the sister death um, I guess I guess if you're you know seriously ill with a fatal disease or something I can understand that uh, depending on the physical circumstances that you you might want to end your life but uh, in general I mean we're all going to go through it it's not a subject that uh, people like to talk about that often but uh, I think it's important to talk about it, or at least understand as much as you possibly can about 
uh, death. Some, you know, if you're a religious person, then obviously there's uh, some things that you are anticipating that are going to happen, which uh, I guess makes it a little bit more comforting, knowing that there is something waiting for you. Uh, and people that are not so religious, I guess, uh, just the unknown is going to be the unknown. But, uh, yeah, I would hope that uh, nobody wants to die uh, in a violent uh, situation or in a terrible terminal illness or anything like that. Uh, I would hope most people, like, most people I think uh, that I've spoken to said that they, they would like to go in their sleep, you know, if possible. Uh, I know when I was very ill in 21, uh, I didn't really know what the outcome was going to be. Even the doctors, because I had something that there's no cure for, so I didn't know what the end result was going to actually be. But uh, thank God uh, I pulled through it, and uh, I'm okay now. Um, I don't know what the residual effects are going to be during, you know, in the future, but... Uh, for now, I'm fine. I'm still working, and I'm going to be 71. So uh, we'll see. Uh, don't plan. My mom is 92. Uh, she complains. Obviously, she has a lot of aches and pains and stuff like that. And physically, this becomes more difficult to do your daily functions. Uh, she's a very stubborn person, so she's adamant not having somebody come and help her. She wants to, you know do everything on our own. Uh, eventually, I, I'm probably going to have to have somebody come in and, and look after her, at least part-time, uh, to get some, you know, have our basic needs taken care of. So, uh, if you have any thoughts or anything about uh, death, which is inevitable for everybody, uh, please let me know. Uh, I'll be happy to respond to any comments you guys have. Okay? Until next time. Bye.